On the first day of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. Yes. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. My brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, or Corpus Christi, as it is commonly called. This solemnity was established in the year 1264 by Pope Urban IV because of a miracle. In 1263, a German priest named Peter of Prague decided to make a pilgrimage to Rome. Father Peter was described by people as being a pious priest. But what people did not know was that each time Father Peter celebrated Mass, he found it difficult to believe that Jesus was present in the consecrated hosts and wine. While on his pilgrimage to Rome, he stopped in the Italian town of Bolsena to celebrate Mass. Almost immediately after speaking the words of consecration, Blood started to drip from the consecrated host and trickle over his hands onto the altar and onto the corporal. At first, Father Peter did not know what was happening and he tried to hide the blood. But once he realized what had happened, he felt he could not continue celebrating the Mass and asked to be taken to the nearby city of Vieto, where Pope Urban was then residing. After confessing his doubts and describing what had happened, Pope Urban absolved him. The Pope then asked that the host and the bloodstained corporal be brought to the Orvieto. Pope Urban, along with other cardinals, archbishops, and bishops, met the procession and amid great pomp had the host and the corporal placed in the cathedral. The bloodstained corporal is still present in the cathedral today. It is said that Pope Urban was so touched by this miracle that he commissioned St. Thomas Aquinas to compose the prayers for a special mass honoring the Holy Eucharist as the body of Christ. One year after the miracle, in August of 1264, Pope Urban IV introduced the Mass that St. Thomas had composed, and by means of a papal bull, instituted the Feast of Corpus Christi. We all know that when you do something repeatedly, the action can, can, can become repetitive, 
and even boring. The same thing can happen at Mass. Because we attend Mass on a regular basis, we can at times take the Eucharist for granted. While we probably do not deny that at the words of consecration, the bread and wine truly become the body and blood of Jesus, we can sometimes forget how amazing the sacrament really is. That is one of the reasons why the Church gives us today's beautiful solemnity Corpus Christi. On this solemnity, every Catholic throughout the world turns their attention to this divine gift by which Jesus, under the appearance of bread and wine, continues to dwell among us and to nourish our souls through the most blessed sacrament. Whether we realize it or not, there are two miracles that occur at every Mass. During the words of consecration, the bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Jesus. They are profoundly changed. Jesus becomes truly present in the bread and wine. That is the first miracle. The second miracle is that although the substance of the bread and wine has changed, their appearance remains the same. In other words, after the words of consecration are spoken, the hosts and the wine still like, look like bread and wine. But under those appearances, Jesus is truly present. This is why we treat the Eucharist with such great reverence and love. It is not just a symbol like many of our Protestant brothers and sisters believe. The Eucharist is the real presence of Jesus. The consecrated host and wine become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. At every Mass, through the ministry of the priest and by the power of the Holy Spirit, the bread and wine changes into the body and blood of Jesus, even though their appearance remains the same. Right after the words of consecration, we all express our wonder and belief in this miracle when we give our response to the priest's invitation, the mystery of faith. We affirm that we believe that the bread and wine have truly become the body and blood of Jesus. Each time Mass is celebrated, God performs this miracle of changing the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus. And there's only one way for us to respond to this utterly amazing gift, and that is with gratitude and thanksgiving. In fact, the very word Eucharist comes from a Greek word which means thanksgiving. It is with gratitude and thanksgiving that we are nourished by the bread of life. It is with gratitude and thanksgiving that we become the living Eucharist. According to St. Augustine, we become what we receive. When we receive Holy Communion, we are uniting our whole life to that of Jesus. When we receive Holy Communion, the priest says the words, the body of Christ, or the blood of Christ. And our response is amen. So be it. I believe when we respond amen, we become the body of Christ. As the body of Christ, we are called to reach out to others, just as Jesus does. When we receive the body and blood of Jesus, we are telling Jesus that we want to show our gratitude to him by the way we live our lives. We want to be like him. We want to strive to love God and our neighbor, just as Jesus showed us his love by suffering and dying on the cross. As the body of Christ, we want to love others by serving, by forgiving, and by bringing happiness to those around us, just as Jesus does for us. When we do this, the Eucharist will have completed its mission, which is to gradually transform us into mature sons and daughters of the one true God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May he show his face to you and have mercy. And may he give you peace. The Lord bless you. Oh
Love